Thanks, Paul. Every year on September 21, the United Nations invites all nations to honor a cessation of hostilities and commemorate the International Day of Peace through education and public awareness on peace-related issues. Now, this year's theme is Sustainable Development Goals, Building Blocks for Peace. And joining us today to talk about this year's commemoration is the founding chairman of the International Peace Diplomacy Corps, Ray Rutkendel Rosario. Good morning, Ray, and welcome to our program. What a timely uh, yeah. topic to, to, to discuss peace and, and conflict resolution. Yeah. And we're just coming from last week's ASEAN Summit, yes. where we, we saw diplomacy at work, or yes. perhaps diplomacy fail. I mean, I, depending on how you look at it. Your yeah. observations of last week's ASEAN Summit. Well, basically, when you talk of diplomacy, it's really something that we would want to encourage all the member states to participate in a collective and shared thoughts. And that is also the reason why we are celebrating International Peace Day, to raise awareness among member states, not only in ASEAN, and may it always serve as a guide to, to everyone so that they would always be guided by the principles and purposes of the UN Charter. There's a debate, I'm sure you know this, among diplomats themselves. Yeah. I mean, uh, this is one thing you say in the open, but it's another thing you do mm -hmm. uh, behind closed doors. I mean, diplomacy is really about advancing national interest, and that requires get going into war or saber-rattling or, mm -hmm. or uh, threatening to, to, to declare war. That is good diplomacy, as opposed to diplomacy meaning a commitment to principles of peace and so forth. I mean, um, this is a very pragmatic approach that we see now happening in mm -hmm. ASEAN. Uh, your thoughts on that? Well, war should never be an option among the member states of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. The Philippines, as a founding member state, will always abide its law, its observation for the interests of what the international community would prefer. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we are in that direction, not really for the engagement of war. But uh, having said that, because of our commitment to peace, uh, it's also been an excuse not to build your own armed forces. It's also been an excuse not to fortify uh, your boundaries. And people will, sh people will say that, look what, all, look what this peace has brought this country. Now we have the Chinese patrolling the, the, the Philippine waters. You now have Chinese structures uh, on, on, on within Philippine uh, sovereign waters. I mean, what does peace buy you? What does peace get you? What does diplomacy earn you? Yeah. Well, there are different issues embedded to diplomacy in the international scale. But for as long as the International Peace Day is, mm -hmm. you know, here, we will be celebrating it to probably inform, remind, and to re-engineer mm -hmm. the thoughts of our frontliners in, in the Philippine foreign policy. Mm -hmm. And during the conference, we would be inviting some members of the diplomatic mm -hmm. and consular corps to express their sent sentiments on the said issue. Right. The Duterte administration, in as far as the, its framework in engaging China, has, uh, has, uh, has been rather dovish, actually, um, which is ironic considering the forcefulness of the president, the kind of rhetoric he, we're used to hearing from him. Mm -hmm. He's been subdued. He, he's been conciliatory towards China. Um, it, some say he's too soft. Some say um, he, it's a capitulation. But, but using your framework of, of diplomacy for peace, is that the right direction to talk uh, 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 with, with China? Well, different methods would always apply. And I highly believe that President Duterte would certainly give us the, um, the great efforts mm -hmm. in, in resolving the current issue mm -hmm. in the West Philippine Sea. And in fact, I really admire how he is trying to do this in, in a very open way. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, the president, he is always the chief architect of our Philippine foreign policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, expound a bit on that. You, uh, you admire him for the way he's uh, handled uh, diplomacy uh, in a very open way. Yeah. Well, uh, remember that our pillars of the foreign policy mm -hmm. are centered on three issues. Mm -hmm. Number one, you have the promotion of the economic interests. Secondly, you have the national security. And thirdly, you have the promotion of the welfare of the overseas Filipino workers. Mm -hmm. 
So the national security would always be there. It would always be present. And um, these are the highlights of our main concern mm -hmm. in, in, in lieu of the West Philippine Sea. Mm -hmm. well, let's move on to another hot issue, mm -hmm. which uh, now has spilled over into international diplomacy. Yeah. This is the internal issue of uh, the, the administration's war on illegal drugs, okay. which has caught the attention of the international <clears throat> community, the United Nations, for example, mm -hmm. the United States, uh, making it very clear that it's concerned about reports of extrajudicial killings, mm -hmm. the conduct of the war. Um, where does the sovereignty of the state end, which is the Philippines, for example, mm -hmm. and where does the intervention of the international community begin? Because that, that is diplomacy, really, mm -hmm. uh, when you think about it. Uh, the friction between the two has to be, you know, uh, settled diplomatically. Well, we, we are talking here of internal sovereignty and external sovereignty. For as long as this uh, issue is concerned, we really would want to have an independent policy, an independent government. He himself as the president would be able to identify what are the mechanisms on how our country should be able to resolve mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But the way how I see it, maybe we, he doesn't really like criticism mm -hmm. from the international community. Mm -hmm. If there are possible critics, criticism, it should be placed in the context of you know, collective and proper forum. Which is? Which is probably by by calling it in in the proper diplomatic channel because sometimes which is, um, which is like through, through ambassadors through maybe through the foreign affairs or it really depends so when you talk of the united nations there are different agencies who should really take care of you know these issues not abruptly because if a person would be a UN official and he will contest a certain statement that would be against him, then in a way there is already a conflict of interest because he is probably representing UN and he should be able to segregate himself from his personal opinion. So, but on the other hand, um, international criticism has played an important role in settling international disputes as well. I mean, if it weren't for um, the criticisms of human rights groups, of uh, humanitarian organizations, um, perhaps the war in, 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 in the Balkans would have continued, for example, uh, if it weren't for the role of humanitarians, the, the, the conflict between Israel and, and Palestine would probably be even worse than it is right now. I mean, there is a role, obviously, yeah. uh, for, for international criticism. I mean, right. it is not for just one sovereign state to say, um, everything that happens in our, within our boundary uh, is our own business. I mean, how do you balance the two? Because again, that is diplomacy and that is conflict resolution. Well, we have to listen the various uh, sentiments of the international community, but at the end of the day, it is our sovereign uh, state who should be able to identify what are the best, you know, mechanism that will enhance the national interest of our people in the international community. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, it's really a game of assertion. And diplomacy is about what you do to me, I'll do to you. So it's a mutual um, agreement also in an informal way. But having said that, it, it also, helps, also helps to get other countries involved <coughs> in your own internal um, conflict uh, resolution. Let's take the, the Muslim Mindanao, uh, the peace talks with the communist uh, insurgents. I mean. Uh, how do you see this playing out uh, in your framework of diplomacy? Well, it's a very complicated. Is scenario. the administration on the right track uh, with the, with the with the peace agreement with, with the Muslims and the ongoing peace talks with the CPP, NPA, and BF? Well, any peace agreements would always be a positive factor for the government, mm -hmm. and I think that the Duterte administration mm -hmm. is really working hard on it. And Secretary Duresa, for instance, he is really active in, in really making it happen, mm -hmm. not only to certain groups, but you know they are trying to empower the marginalized sector that are also displaced in Mindanao. So in effect, it's always been a positive and a welcoming uh, condition on the part of this administration. But you're advocating sustainable peace, right? Um, as opposed to just a simple peace on paper, obviously. Sure. Um, that's always the, that's, that is always the 
I think the the challenge of, 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 of peace agreements mm -hmm. that it, 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 it the, the ultimate resolution is uplifting the plight of the people you're you're you're, you're crafting peace with um, tell us about the objectives of your conference because uh, your reason why you're here today obviously yeah. uh, is, is to is to invite uh, mm -hmm. people as well uh, and, and, and generate interest in this peace conference that you're having yeah the International Peace Diplomacy Corps aspires to be accredited by the UN ECOSOC as an NGO in special consultative status. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it will come soon, maybe five years from now. Mm -hmm. But the idea of our sustainable peace is really centered on diplomacy and cultural understanding. So when you talk of national security or national diplomacy, that is not really the main uh, advocacy that we have but we would want to really be working with the UN organization in the years to come mm -hmm. so in effect hopefully we'll be an accredited observer so that we could help them in making statements and in the promotion of resolutions in in various general assemblies and in your assessment what is the single most important uh, peace issue in the country right now I guess the most important is to resolve issues in Mindanao. And the administration of President Duterte is really making a very impressive hallmarks mm -hmm. in putting, you know, um, a closure to that an ending war in Mindanao. Or ho or at least we hope we, we, we believe, no? or, yeah, or, sure. or we all hope so. But just in closing, uh, Ray, um, what can we look forward to in this conference? Maybe you'd like to invite uh, our yeah. viewers and what they can look forward to by joining or supporting this conference yeah. of yours. Well, the convention aspires to gather various members of the diplomatic and consular corps to make a statement to raise awareness on peace and development. And it's going to be first of its kind in mm -hmm. the Philippine history mm -hmm. that we have ad adopted the observance of the United Nations International Peace Day. All right. Ray Del Rosario, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And good luck. Sure. And may we have peace <laughs> in this you. country of ours. Coming up, find out the secret to making the world listen to you. Cash that only here on Mornings at ANC.